Cross and Crescent. And we're fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Al Hadid and Dr. Baldwin. And of course, uh, Dr. Uh, Baldwin, before we had our first commercial break, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Al Hadid talked about uh, the uh, differences, quote unquote, between Malcolm and Martin. Mm -hmm. And I think he also indicated that there were more similarities between yeah, the two yeah. than differences, uh -huh. and that we've often uh, heightened those uh, differences. And let's talk about, let's have you to talk about those similarities. Okay, I'd, I'd like mm -hmm. to pick up where he uh, left off. Uh, Malcolm and Martin are commonly viewed as leaders who stood on opposite extremes of the leadership uh, spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, one author puts it, uh, it's like two in a Manichaean contest, mm -hmm. the forces of light against the forces mm -hmm. of darkness. Mm -hmm. But as Dr. Al-Hadid said, we are trying to show that the two men uh, complemented each other, that mm -hmm. they corrected each other, mm -hmm. that they were influenced by each other that they received impelling moral, spiritual, and intellectual power uh, from each other. Uh, they came together around a lot of issues, uh, such as the issue of class toward the end of uh, Malcolm's life, uh, dealing with the is issue of economic injustice and how that relates to racial injustice. Uh, they came together on the South Vietnam issue, and American involvement in South Vietnam. Uh, they came together around the South African issue, South African apartheid. So we so often forget what they shared in terms of ideals uh, because the images we get are of two men who were always in tension with one another and who was always um, uh, standing on different ends of the spectrum. I think one scholar refers to Malcolm as King's ideological nemesis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we get this kind of image, but we want to try and correct that to show that uh, if we bring about a creative in, uh, synthesis of the insights and the ideals of both men, we can address a lot of problems in the contemporary mm -hmm. world, uh, such as religious bigotry and intolerance, uh, mm -hmm. racism, uh, classism, mm -hmm. um, economic injustice. Mm -hmm. I think both men spoke to these issues in similar ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were many similarities despite the differences that we can point to. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if, if you were to... Uh uh, take both these individuals and place them uh, in society today. And you talked about sep post-September 11, uh, 2001. Uh, what would be, uh, 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 according to the way the two of you saw these individuals in your book, what, what would be your uh, perception in reference to that? Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, from an Islamic point mm -hmm. of view, mm -hmm. um, Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz mm -hmm. would uh, be diametrically opposed mm -hmm to those incidents. Now you that, make that reference happened. to uh, Malcolm, Malcolm X as El Haj Malik Al Shabazz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do that deliberately and intentionally because as you know, uh, he made the pilgrimage to Mecca mm -hmm. and changed his name from Malcolm X to Malik mm -hmm. Al Shabazz. And when you say El Haj, it simply means that one who has made the pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I like to think of him in that context mm -hmm. Because if you look at the, the surnames of all of his children, mm -hmm. the Shabazz, mm -hmm. you look at the surname of his widow, mm -hmm. who's now passed, mm -hmm. who was also Betty mm -hmm. Shabazz mm -hmm. or Attila Shabazz, his mm -hmm. daughter. So it's, you know, I'm trying to eliminate that mm -hmm. contradiction. He mm -hmm. can't be Malcolm X and his children Shabazz mm -hmm. and his wife is Shabazz. Mm -hmm. And his passport says Shabazz, so it was El Haj Malik El Shabazz. Mm -hmm. And so part of my uh, uh, contribution uh, in the book was to present him mm -hmm. uh, as a Sunni Muslim mm -hmm. uh, and not a nation of Islam Muslim. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a stage in his life for about 18 years or so. Mm -hmm. But after he left the nation of Islam, that's the point at which he gained universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's the point at which he started concerning himself with humanitarian issues, mm -hmm. which brought him a lot closer to Dr. King. Mm -hmm. It was his ideology in the nation of Islam that alienated him from Dr. Mm -hmm. King. Uh, and so as he became more humanitarian and more universal and international, he became closer and closer to Dr. King. Whether people realize it or not, uh, Al Haj Malik Al Shabazz was nonviolent. Mm -hmm. And when he used the term by any means necessary, he was not using it in a Machiavellian sense mm -hmm. of letting the ends justify the means. He was just simply saying, we will address uh, a given economic, political, social, or moral situation mm -hmm. based on the way it is defined and mm -hmm. based on the way it is presented. So whatever level of struggle, mm -hmm. or in Islam we say jihad, it mm -hmm. requires to overcome that mm -hmm. uh, barrier or that uh, opposition, 
then that's, that's the, the means, means that, that you have to use. Mm -hmm. But once you overcome it, you have to stop at that point. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't stop at that point, then you become an oppressor and you also become violent, mm -hmm. which he was opposed to. And he only spoke of armed struggle in self-defense. Mm -hmm. The incident that happened at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon mm -hmm. was offense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of collateral damage was done. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of slaughter was done. It has nothing to do with Islam mm -hmm. from El Haj Malik Al Sabah's mm -hmm. point of view. And if you read the life of the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. uh, from 610 to 632 and all the military campaigns that he mounted in, at Badr and at uh, Uhud and Udeba mm -hmm. and in Medina and Mecca, he always said, you should fight soldiers, mm -hmm. not women, mm -hmm. not children. Right. Don't kill in the cattle. Don't destroy farms. Mm -hmm. Soldiers fight soldiers. Mm -hmm. They don't involve innocent people in their conflict. Mm -hmm. Dr. Baldwin, how would uh, Dr. Martin Luther King see uh, September 11th? Well, first of all, I agree wholeheartedly with what Dr. Mm -hmm. Al Hadid said. I think both Malcolm and Martin would be very opposed mm -hmm. to what happened. Uh, as Dr. Al Hadid said, what happened has nothing to do with Islam. Uh, obviously, Dr. King would have serious problems with it, mm -hmm. uh, with what happened. I also think he would have serious problems with the kind of response mm -hmm. uh, that the nation is uh, implementing mm -hmm. at this point. Uh, Dr. King always said you don't use military means to create community. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would advocate diplomatic means, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps the use of economic sanctions, mm -hmm. but you never resort to military means. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think he would have a problem with the whole scenario, the way the thing is working out. Mm -hmm in terms of what happened at the Trade Center and the Pentagon, and also what, what is happening in terms of the U.S. military mm -hmm. response mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, we're getting ready for our second uh, commercial break. And when we come back, since uh, we are dealing with the book, we want uh, the two of you to give us some information relative to uh, uh, the book itself, that is, uh, the uh, publication date and uh, how it will be marketed and uh, some of your in, uh, expectations in terms of uh, this uh, document, and so mm -hmm. when we come back, we'll uh, have about what about six minutes, I believe, mm -hmm. to uh, deal with that. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this short uh, commercial break. Of course, gentlemen, before we had our.